we're going to talk about today, what we're going to talk about is finding your inner compass. Now, how often, how often have you found yourself doing something you really didn't want to do because you didn't want to disappoint someone? How many times did you not apply for a job or speak up at a meeting? Because you thought, maybe I'm just not good enough. And how many times has low self-esteem or low self-confidence prevented you from pursuing a goal? That's ever happened to you. And if you ever want to break that cycle, you need to know my friend and one of my very favorite people on the planet, Claudia White. Let's meet her. Now, Claudia is recognized as one of the world's rising high women leaders, making a difference in 2023 by World Leaders Magazine. She's recognized as one of the 10 most admired women leaders to follow in 2022 by Success Pictures Magazine. She's a writer. She is a contagious and enthusiastic public speaker, as you're going to hear in a moment. She's an inspiring leader. She is a certified confidence, cognitive behavior, and life purpose coach. But there's more. Her mission is to empower and to inspire people to believe in themselves through imagination, confidence, and self-care. If you are not following her, you're doing yourself a disservice. Claudia, welcome to Life Altering Events. Thank you so much for having me, Frank. This is going to be amazing. I'm very excited to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Claudia and I met one year ago today at an event here in San Diego. So this is our one year know each other thing. Happy anniversary. Yes, yes. So Claudia, <laughs> tell the viewers who don't know you a little bit about your background. Well, I've been in the leadership zone for over 20 years. I've been a manager in every role I've ever had, which got me started working with people. And I love people. Everybody has a story and that story will actually fuel your purpose if you allow it to come out. But so many times, myself included, we get off track. Something gets in our way, whether it's a challenge, whether it's an obstacle that we just weren't sure what to do and we pump the brakes. And those things keep us from going forward. And I'm a big believer in failing forward, but we are so hard on ourselves. And my job became embracing this failure of forwardness and saying, hey, okay, you made a mistake. No big deal. You got doubts in your head. You've got the gremlin speaking in your ear. You don't need any of that. And if you listen to yourself, if you follow that inner compass, we can achieve anything. And I wanted people to realize all of us have been through difficult times, myself included. I had two failed marriages that were very toxic. It was a blessing to remove myself from those. I had several deaths in my family, including one of my dogs. That trauma that comes from those things can either set you off track or put you on track. And that's where I decided these difficult times, someone is there for you if you allow them to be there. And I wanted people to have that in myself because I went through all those things alone. It can be done. It is very hard. It is very difficult to get through the mud yes. by yourself. But if you have someone who's been there, who understands what you're going through and can pull you out, that's where the magic happens. And that's when I decided I was going to take my coaching to my own business. And I started writing and speaking and doing all these wonderful things. But I tell my story because I want people to know this didn't just happen. Like I didn't just show up like this and was like, hey, it's the best day of my life and I'm gonna show everybody. I went through the mud, just like all of you. And finding your way through that mud gives you perseverance, resilience, determination. And that's when you become who you were meant to be and you live the life you were meant to live. Wow. One of the things that, that I love about talking to you is it's not the latest theory or the latest, hey, do this and you'll be wonderful. Take these 10 steps. It's real world, real life. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I believe and I coach and I speak and I write on lived experience. All of the things that I have done to get myself out of the mud are what I coach on. I have done it. I have been there. I am in the trenches with you. So I understand all the emotions that come with it, the physical, the mental, the emotional, but I'm also there to cheer you on and say, it's possible. You know, who told you that you couldn't do it? And why do you believe them? 
I want you to feel lit up and energized because you see what's possible. I'm not just going to give you a paper and say, do this and expect these imaginary results to happen. That's not a thing. But I'm going to say, yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, you're going to have to look yourself in the mirror and face these things. And at first, it's going to be tough. There's going to be tears. There's going to be emotions. There's going to be anger. There's going to be resentment. But we're going to let all that go. And if I can let it go, you can let it go. So in order to move forward, you got to stop living in the past. We got to understand it. We got to heal from it. And then we need to move forward and use it to fuel ourselves. Now, coaching, Claudia, coaching didn't become a real trendy thing till about maybe 10 years ago. You did this 20 years ago. You started 20 years ago when there were very few women involved in this. So what what was it the motivate? What was that aha moment that said, I'm going to become this trailblazer? You know, when I work with teams and I worked for over 20 years in a spa as an executive director and a spa director, and I would work one-on-one with my teams, whether it be training them actually in the physical, in in what they were doing, educating them. And I was doing that, but I would work one-on-one with them with what was going on with them, like how they were going to achieve their goals, how they were going to hit these numbers and do all these things. And no one understood what that was. They're like, numbers, what's that? (laughs) In order to know where you need to go, you need to know where you're at. So that's what we would focus on. But as I was going through that, I was seeing all the doubt, all the mistrust, the disbelief in themselves. And I was just kind of enamored by it. I'm like, why is this a thing? Why are all these people who are so good? I can see that they're so good. They have so much talent. They have so much potential, but they don't believe in themselves at all. And I'm like, we got to fix this. And that's when I started digging into their mindset, to their skills, to their past, like what brought you here? But in order to do that, there had to be trust. They had to know that I wasn't out to get them. I was going to take all their secrets and, you know, put them out there for the whole world to know. They had to know like what's in the room. You're going to tell me and it doesn't leave the room. And I want you to feel comfortable telling me what's going on with you. Because in order for me to understand you, I have to know everything. And then they got comfortable. And then things started happening and they were starting to rewire. The brain was going, okay, we don't have to live in this mindset that we've been in. We don't have to sit here and go, this is as good as it's get. I'm never going to hit these goals. And I would say, what are your dreams? What are your personal dreams? And they would look at me and like, we're supposed to be talking about business here. I go, listen, your personal dreams fuel your professional dreams. One hand washes the other. So if you have a big dream, what is it? Well, I mean, I would really like to, you know, be on stage. Okay, so how are we going to get you there? I don't know. Well, let's figure it out. And they would look at me like, wow, you're actually supporting this. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. not going to be the person who's going to be like, no, forget it. That's too big of a dream for you. You can't do that. No, if this is what you want to do, then let's figure it out. And then when they would hit these goals and they would buy the new house or go on the dream vacation or write a book or whatever it was, they would look at me and go, wow, you actually believed in me. And I go, yeah. I believed in you from the get-go, but now you believe in yourself. And that's where the magic happens. That is is so true. Is is someone to come alongside. Uh, For women, it was was much more difficult. When I I was coming up in the corporate sector 100 years ago, there was somebody who would bring you in and show show you the ropes, that kind of a thing. It wasn't available for women. Because women, you couldn't go after work to the bar and drink. And you couldn't go play golf you could but very few did and so there was that that was that missing component that missing ingredient and a lot of women that I worked with coming up felt you know I'm not going to get there it's never going to happen it just isn't there for me is that what you see with many of your people I do I find a lot of it is that voice in their head from their past like their childhood whether it be a parent or teacher or something someone that they respected that said something to them, whether it was the correct interpretation or not, because our brain interprets things that may not be the actual intention, but we hear it a certain way. And they would go, oh, well, I guess that means I can't do that. And then that would carry on into the future. And that would carry on into their adulthood of all the missed opportunities or things they didn't take a chance at trying because the voice was still in their head saying, you can't do that. You're not good enough. And we adopt that into our hearts and our souls. And we go, I'm not good enough. And I can, I can relate to that. I was in 
a meeting and anybody that knows me knows I get so excited. I get so excited about things and I get all these ideas and I just want to share them. And it's, you know, I get so fired up and I was so ready. I had been to a conference and I was like, I put some things together and I was ready to present. And I said, okay, they're like, you're up. And I'm like, great. So this is what I have. This is what, you know, I was ready to go. And the person who was running the meeting turned to me and said, we're not doing that. Cut me off at the knees. And I was like, and I just stopped. And at that moment, I silenced myself. Because I had this thought in my brain that said, well, if nobody's going to listen, then why am I going to say anything? Why waste my time with it? And then I stopped speaking up. And then one day, I was like, you know what? I don't really care what you think. And I'm going to say it anyway. And I started speaking up. And I started saying, this is what's happening. This is what needs to change. And all of a sudden, the tables turned. And people were starting to listen because they knew I wasn't going to back down because when you back down, they win. And I was not letting anybody win, but me. And I was like, listen, I don't care if you like my idea or not. I don't care if you use my idea or not, but I am doing a disservice to myself if I am not speaking up. And that's the day I said, my turn. And I took my power back. And I heard you on the Uncover Your Why podcast, which was, which was intriguing as hell. Um, which I believe it was it was the personal growth clinic that you were doing. Would you get, go into some of these key points when you do these these workshops and these seminars? You've touched on some of them, but you you get into understanding clarity. Expand on that. I love a good workshop. I very much want to get people involved. You know, when I'm speaking, it's great because I get to all these audiences and people hear me. But when I'm actually working with people, I want to know what they think. I want to know what they actually see, because if you worked with a big group of people before, especially as a leader, you have this idea of what you think is happening, what you think, the stuff that you do, the things that you're saying that people are understanding. They don't always understand it like that. They don't always see it that way. It's the power of perspectives. And so when you get other people in a group and you say, listen, I want you to open up. And I want you to tell me what's going on here. What's wrong? What do you see? What do you feel? And they're always a little reluctant, especially if their leader is in the room. And I'm like, listen, your leader needs to hear this stuff. So if you're afraid to tell them, that's problem number one already. So we need to squash that and we need to open up and we're going to use this dialogue to create change. But clarity is key to anything. If you don't know what you're doing, it's just like I said with your numbers. If you don't know where you're at, you don't know where you're going. You have got to understand what you really want. And your why is a great way to get there. Because if you know what you're doing because of what you're doing, you're going to get there further and faster. And when you're identifying the purpose of what you're doing, one of the big things I do in group workshops, especially with teams, is to have them uncover their own mission statement. Because everybody has a role within the company or the community, right? Everybody has a purpose that they're doing. They're, this is their role in the job. And there's a mission that they all support for the company. But that specific role that you have, there's a why behind the role that you have. So uncovering your own mission is something that you can come back to at any time. It's coming back to your why. Why am I doing this? Why do I do this job every day? Why do I come in here and have these conversations? Why do I care? And that's when you go, okay, this is my purpose. This is my why. So I need to write a mission statement for myself around this. That will be the catalyst and the drive to take me further, to expand my knowledge, to expand my growth, and to help me work better, whether it's with clients or products or people or whatever you're doing, that mission is yours. That's ownership that you are taking in that role. One of the things that I've seen quite a bit, Claudia, and I used to hear it when I was coming up was, look, emotions have no role in the business world or in your professional world which is nonsense, all right? What do you say to people who, when you hear the statement, well, it's, it's, it's not personal, it's business. That statement doesn't exist anymore. That may have, it really didn't exist back then either, but it may have been something that people said, but it doesn't exist. And I am a living proof of that because I kept the emotions in check at all costs. There were only two that I had. I was either pissed off or I was excited. All the ones in between, I kept hidden. But if you truly want to connect with people, 
It is going to be through your emotional intelligence because you have to read them. We are all people. We are not robots. We have feelings. We have emotions. All of them. There's a huge scale of them at all different times, in different hours of the day, in different seconds and minutes. You need to tap into those and you need to allow them. Because that's the only way you're going to know if someone is really okay. If I came in and I, you said good morning to me and I was like, good morning. And they're like, how are you? I'm fine. And then just moved on. You're never going to get that dialogue that you need. Because if people don't feel they can be themselves around you, you're never going to get the best out of them. And if they know that you care in whatever emotional state they are in, and you are willing to show your vulnerability, hey, I've been there. We've all been in a project that crashed and burned and it's devastating, especially if you kept months and months and months of your time or years of your life on it and it just blew up in your face and you're like, ah, I've been there. I don't know anybody that hasn't been there. But if you tell that person, look, this has happened. I have totally been there. I feel you right now. You need to take a minute. Like go take a minute, go take a day, go take whatever you need and let's come back and talk about it. And when they're in the right frame of mind to have that conversation, because now they're ready to focus on this happened, we're going to let it go. What did you learn from it? Where could we have been better? Where could we troubleshoot so this doesn't happen again? Because I love mistakes. Like the epic blows, yeah, they're not great, but you learn so much from them. Instead of saying like, you screwed up, you're fired, you know, all of these things, that's not going to help anyone get better. What it's going to do is it's going to keep them quiet. And it's going to make sure that they never try again. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we've both been in this situation where we're in a meeting and, and, and it's like a leadership meeting, right? And the uh, the leader's up there and tends to pontificate. Do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Nobody says anything. Meeting ends. Guy looks at me and says, see, there's no problem here. No one objected to anything. And he said, you didn't give anyone the opportunity to object to anything. You didn't have to offer questions. You didn't ask for opinions. You didn't ask for. So a lot of it, what I love what you do is you're doing it from the bottom up, but you're also doing it from the top down because mm -hmm. it's the leaders, what I've seen in all my years, the leaders are the ones who have to change. They have to set the tone. Is that right? Absolutely. I have seen it a million times. Nothing is going to work if everyone is afraid of the leader. You cannot do that. If they're afraid to tell you exactly how it is, you have a problem. There should be regular surveys, even if they're anonymous, on how you're doing. And you need to be asking your people what they think, because that's why you have them. You don't know everything. You don't. It's impossible. You cannot know everything. You are not good at everything. That's why you have people in all these roles that do all these magic things. I had a girl who I was working with, and I was putting together something that I thought was, you know, great. And I was very excited about it. And I was like, this is it. This is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to work. And I looked at her and I go, why are you making that face? I go, do you like it? And she's like, yeah. And I go, tell me what you think. I said, I don't want you to tell me what you think I want to hear. I want to know what you think. And she's like, well, I have a better idea. And I was like, great, let's do that. I wasn't crying. I wasn't angry with her and putting her in the punishment chair. Like, listen. Your people are brilliant, but you have to let them be brilliant. One of the things that uh, that I found years ago, I used to do turnarounds of failing companies. <clears throat> so I would walk in and try to meet with everybody individually. And I would say, tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, well, the bad and the ugly came out like that. Right? <laughs> And then I would ask them, if you could do one thing to make the situation that you're in better, what would it be? Okay. And you used to get the deer in the headlights. Like, what? Nobody's ever asked me. You do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a community, right? Like if you're having a culture that is progressive and you're moving forward and you believe in change, then you have to ask other people what their opinions are because they're doing it with you. Your team is literally coming in and bleeding for your mission every day. They're building your dream, right? They're helping you yes. achieve greatness. So if you have them on your team, but you don't care what they think, 
you don't trust them, then why are they on your team? So is that a problem with them or is that a problem with you? That's something that yep. needs to be dug into. No question. Absolutely. The uh, the fear of mistake, you talked that, about that a lot, you did a little bit earlier, is in, in an environment with, with fear, you tend to hide things or you tend not to try, correct? Because if something does go wrong, then everyone's looking for an escape hatch. How do I shift the blame? How do I do this? Nobody wants to be in trouble. That's where that's where this all comes down to. This all comes into nobody wants to be in trouble. Nobody wants it to be their fault. I am a huge believer of saying, I screwed up. And I tell this to the teams that I work with. I'm like, if you make a mistake, I would much rather that you say, it was me. I did it. I said it. I screwed up. Whatever. And I'm like, cool. Let's move on. But if you lie about it and you say, that wasn't me and you have an excuse or you put it on somebody else, I'm going to go, mm, I don't really think that's true. And now, do I really trust you? I don't. Just tell me what you think. I have paved the way for you to literally say, I screwed up. And I'm not one of those leaders that holds stuff against people. I don't like that. I've seen it before where they're like, oh, they screwed up this one time in 1984. And I'm going to keep going back to that every time I bring them in a meeting and they screw up. I'm going to be like, do you remember when you screwed up in 1984? Come on, let it go. Literally all of us have screwed up. There has been something in our lives, in our work, in whatever we have screwed up. We have said the wrong thing. We have done the wrong thing. Move on. Because holding that over somebody's head isn't the sign of a good leader. It's not the sign of a good person either. What are you gaining from that? Nothing. You're ruining the relationship that you're trying to build. Exactly. It comes down to, as I've heard you say, it's it's trust and it's respect. And I read somewhere that respect is like the air that you breathe, right? As long as it's present, no problem. You don't think about it. But the minute you take it away, that's all anybody can think about. And now the original conversation deteriorates. It's not about the original purpose anymore. Now it's saving dignity. And saving dignity causes more problems, correct? Oh, uh, yes. I have seen this on a regular basis. Respect is something that is very important. It's one of my pillars. I believe that you should have respect toward people at all times. In order for them to be seen and heard, they need to feel respected. But respect is a two-way street. Yes. This is the problem that I see all the time is they're not respecting me. Well, are you respecting them? Well, I mean, okay, that's not really how it works. See, if you want respect, you have to give respect and then you receive respect. That relationship is a back and forth. You can't just demand that everyone respect you because they should know who you are and what you stand for. They don't. That's not how this works. But if you get to know them and you lead with manners and kindness, you are going to see an avenue of respect develop between all parties. Respect is not wearing the crown. That's not what it is. You don't put the crown on and go, I get respect today. I got the sash and I'm going to just walk around and be like, everyone respect me. That is not how it works here. The, what you're going to get is people going, I don't like that person. They have an attitude problem. Respect comes from within. It's common courtesy, but it is earned by your actions, not your words. Exactly. Now, I've heard you, someone call you one time, the enthusiasm igniter. I think people can see this here. How do you define it? I mean, it literally is. I ignite excitement because I live for it, right? It's in me. I just can't contain it. And it used to be something that I would kind of like, muffle in certain environments but now I'm like whatever it comes out this is me this is who I am I'm being myself and when I get excited about things you get excited about things and when you have that contagious energy happening you get more people energized about what they're doing if I came on your show and I was like hey Frank this is boring you know let me just do this and we're gonna talk and I'm gonna tell you the things and you'd be like wow why did I ask you to be on my show but if I'm like Frank listen <laughs> We have this idea. We're going to take it this way. You're going to be like, holy cow, this girl's on fire. That's what I do. I come into rooms and I just work them. I get people fired up and I'm going to keep going. You've got that one person in the corner that's just like, mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, I'm going to break you before this day is over. Watch. 
because you can't help it. You can't help but to smile. You can't help but to be excited. You can't help but to feel it. I did this talk. I'm an esthetician by trade. I've been an esthetician for 25 years. And I went to this junior high school. And they're like, it's a career fair. We need you to come in. We need to talk about estheticians and what they do. Well, of course, nobody knew what that was. So I was like, okay. And I have this thing. If you ask questions, I like to give prizes because people are afraid to ask. So I've got all these like junior high kids in the room and I'm getting them fired up. And, and they're, now they're asking questions because now they're getting prizes. So more and more questions are happening and it's, it's very exciting. And I love it. People were asking about things. How do I do this? How do I use this? I'm like, I love it. So when I left, the instructor, the teacher called me and said, listen, I don't know what you did in there, but we've got kids running through the halls going, we're going to be estheticians. And I was like, this is amazing. I could have come in and said I was anything. But because of the level of excitement I brought to them, I got them curious. I got them fired up. They're like, we're doing it. If we can be like her, then this is what we're doing. So it's all about that magnetic energy, right? No matter what I'm saying or doing, I'm going to have this. This happens because it's me. And it's a great way to show people I'm not afraid to be me and you shouldn't be afraid to be you. Now, when people work with you, and if you don't work, if you're not working with the restaurant, I recommend you do work with Claudia. When, when people are working with you and you've now got them, they're 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 thrilled, they're particularly at a, at a workshop, they're excited, they're ready to go. Then they go back and they got 1,500 phone messages and they're behind on the job and they're behind a little bit and they take your material and they put it in the corner and then they don't look at it again for a year. So the follow-up, how do you keep the follow-up to keep that initial enthusiasm going? Oh, yes, we have to we have to recheck in. I call that going back to your default setting. Once you leave all the magic behind, we're going back into the real world and we're going to. No, we're not doing that. A follow up is going to happen almost immediately because I'm going to give a question or a worksheet or an assignment and I'm going to get everybody's information and I'm going to reach out to them individually and say, how's it going? What are you stuck with? What are you working on? What have you actually done? And then there will be a continued follow up from me because I want to know how you're achieving things. I make it very clear with anybody that I work with, you have my information, you can contact me at any time. Like I am literally here for you. I'm not a one and done. Like Once you see me, it, you know, I'll reach out and be like, how's it going? It's not a pressure thing. It's not, it's not a thing to make sure that, you know, you're cracking the whip at, at where you are. I wanna know because I'm investing myself in you as you are investing in me, which means we're in it to win it. So once you get me, you got me forever. Like I'm here for you, but prioritizing your time and time management is going to keep you on track so that you don't get lost in those emails. You don't get lost in those phone calls. You don't get lost in those one-on-one -on -one meetings. And then all of a sudden you have a stack of work because you didn't get anything else done. I teach people how to prioritize their time and their energy, and you shouldn't be doing anything unless you're having it fun. And I know some of the stuff that we have to do is not fun, but how can you make it more fun? Can you put some music on? Can you listen to a podcast? Can you get up and move around? You know, put a little glitter on it. I don't know what you need to do, but do something to make it fun because you can take mundane tasks and turn them into something great. For me, if I put on some 80s and 90s music, I can pretty much do anything. Like I will take the garbage out. I will be doing leaves in the yard, whatever it is, I will do it because it's creating something in me. There's an energy, there's a, that vibe is trying to come out. So you can be present in your excitement in anything that you do, but you need the right tools to do it. Exactly. And the energy is contagious. Yeah, people see you and they, they're energized. And then they got to go back. And, and having those, those things that, like you just pointed out, what makes you relax? What makes you happy? You can bring that into the workplace, right? Even particularly now, when there's so much remote work, people are working from home. People are, you know, have to be in the office with a guy pounding on the desk every five minutes. What makes you happy? What makes you relax? And what makes you excel or want to excel even better? Yeah, you have to have those tools in your tool belt. That's what I call them. That keep you motivated, that keep you excited. And if you're working from home, if smell is a great trigger for you, then have something that you love close to you that will keep you in the moment, that will keep you focused and relaxed, but feeling happy and comfortable. If you've got your music on and you can still work with that, great. If you know that one of your colleagues 
brings out the best in you, you need to be having regular chats with them. Do a little virtual 15 minute if you need to, or a phone call, just so that you can get fired up from them. I know several great colleagues and speakers and friends of mine, coaches as well, that I'm like, if I need a little bit of a boost, I can call them and boom, I'm done. Doing a show like yours, literally I'll be on cloud nine for the rest of the day. Can't help it because the energy is in within me. I'm just excited to do it. So finding more excitement in your life and don't say you don't have any because there's something in your world that excites you. And if it's something that you're missing, you need to bring it back and have that carried through and it will make everything better. One of the things I've said for years is you have personal life and you have professional life and you cannot separate them. When one side is struggling, it will impact the other side. Absolutely positively. Right. So you deal with a holistic approach as opposed to when I was coming up, it was focus on the job and the task and whatever. No, that's not the case. It's the whole person the whole being is that right absolutely and i mean anybody can realize this you know exactly if you're having a lot of stuff going on in your personal life your work is going to suffer no matter if you want it to or not you could be trying your best but you can't get that off your shoulder so involving that in the process and saying okay this is what's going on in my personal life i have got to make some changes because it's affecting, it's spilling over into all the other things that I'm involved in and I'm not doing my best because of it. And knowing when to take that time out and say, I need a minute, I'm gonna need a break, I'm gonna need a day, I need a week, whatever it is to regroup. And don't just say, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna be off. Like you need to figure out what's going on. You need to go, okay, what am I missing from my life? What is bringing me down? How can I put boundaries up? How can I take care of myself better? Because if you don't start taking care of yourself, it will take care of you. So knowing when you need that break, listening to yourself, listening to your body, knowing when you're tired, everybody gets tired. You're doing too much. Where can you cut back? What are you missing out on? Are you so involved in your work life that you are missing out on life itself? That's where that harmony comes together is understanding where your time and energy is going and how much of it is actually for you. We're great at doing things for other people. Unbelievable. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be putting your best toward anybody. They're going to get what they get. And that's not hurting anybody in the relationship. Personal. I heard you say uh, in San Diego, you have to learn how to say no. What's the importance of that? <laughs> um, welcome to burnout 101, first of all. <laughs> and welcome to never doing anything that you want to do. I was the queen of never saying no. Part one, because I get overly excited. I am suffering shiny object syndrome person. I am getting much better at it. But, you know, everything sounds like a great idea to me. So, yeah, let's do it. But when that happens, you know, well... I said yes to this. Uh Uh-oh, I've got a stack of work over here. I have all these things that I said I was going to do. I need to help this person, you know, paint their house. How am I going to get all this done? And then you wonder why you're tired, right? You're just running all the time. You're running, 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 running. And you wish, I just want to sit down for a minute. Or I wish I could go to the gym or whatever it is. You can do those things because you just need to say no. Great story of when I learned about boundaries is my mom, my mom's 82 years old, and I help her with things all the time. And she had called me one day and I was knee deep in work, knee deep, meetings back to back. I had a couple of shows I was doing. I had something I needed to write. I was on deadlines. And she's like, hey, she goes, can you come over here and hang these curtains for me? And I froze and I was like, oh no, I don't have time for that. There's no way I have time for that. And I was like, she's gonna freak out. She's gonna freak out if I tell her no, right? This is gonna happen. And I, and I paused and I took a deep breath and I said, you know what? I really don't have time for that right now. And she goes, okay. She goes, I'll call someone else. And I went, what? There are other people in this world that help you with things? Excuse me? Are you kidding me? I've been saying yes for years when other people can help you? What is happening? And it was this whole like explosion in my brain of, wait a minute. You are not the only person in this world that makes it turn. 
you can say no. You can put it down. You can say, I would love to, but not right now. I'm knee deep. You can say, I just don't want to, which is where I came to with my boundaries. If I don't want to do something, I just flat out say, I don't really want to do that. I'm really interested. There's no excuse. There's no lies. I'm flat out going to tell you, I don't want to. And they go, okay, the world doesn't explode. It doesn't end because you said no. So that's your one assignment for today. I want you to find one thing this week to say no to and make it be something you really don't want to do. Exactly. The other thing I heard you say at that same conference is, and you don't have to give a reason. We are so conditioned that we have to explain ourselves. We don't. First of all, no one really cares. Right. They really don't. Exactly. Care. They don't care. They have their own stuff going on. They don't care. But we feel like we have to. And that's the guilt talking. It's the guilt that we have, that people-pleasing setting of they're not going to like me or they're going to be upset with me or I'm not a good person if I don't do this. None of those things are true. Those are lies that you're telling yourself. That's not true. So put those thoughts on trial. Is that really true? No, you're a good person. Of course you are. But you do have things that you need to do as well. Taking care of yourself comes down to the fact of you knowing no matter what you're accepted. And if the person doesn't like what's going on with you, if you say, I can't do it and they don't like it, they're not your people. Because I can bet you that same person, if you ask them, they would have no problem telling you no and walking away. There would be no reason, nothing. So why do you feel that you need to do that? You don't. I'm giving you permission. You need to give yourself permission to say, I'm not doing this. And that's it. Move on. Perfect. I love that. One of the things that our, our other mutual friends, uh, Summer and Sajel, will say a lot is there's understanding and there's acceptance. Now, I may never, ever understand where you're going through, what you've been through, but I can't accept it. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Each of us have our own journey and our own path, and it's, it looks different. We can relate if we've been through something similar, but no matter what, if we had identical situations that we were both going through at the exact same time, you're going to process it completely different than I am. And I may never understand that. I may never understand why you chose to do this as opposed to why I chose to do this. But I can go, I accept that because I know you and I trust you. And I know that you're not trying to do anything to harm me or be malicious. And you got stuff going on in your life. But what you need to know is I accept it and I'm here for you. I can be your support. I can be your community if you need me. And I'll check in on you every once in a while just to make sure. And you don't have to talk about it. You don't have to explain anything. Just know that I am here. Having presence in someone's life makes a huge difference. I love that point. I interviewed a, a, a clinical psychiatrist one time. And she said, Frank, there's sympathy and there's empathy. Sympathy is, I'm sorry this happened to you. Empathy is, I'm here. How can I help you? I think you bring that to the party every day, Claudia. Thank you. Well, we are just about out of time here. You've your fountain of knowledge and wisdom here. What last thought do you want to leave with the viewers around the world today? No matter what is going on with you, no matter what is going on around you, focus on yourself. Have an open heart and an open mind and anything is possible. And don't be afraid to share whether it be ideas, whether it be what's going on with you. That's how you connect to people. You are present in each other's stories when you allow yourself to share. Outstanding. Now, the world is going to want to know how to reach you. The people who, the few people in the world who don't know how to reach you, how do people reach you? There's lots of ways to reach me because I am everywhere. <laughs> you can find me on my website, which is claudiawyatt.com. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, and now Facebook under Claudia Wyatt and The Claudia Wyatt. I would love to talk to you, so please reach out. Ladies and gentlemen, when you reach out, Claudia, she responds quickly. And she, she's on it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, as I said, we're just about out of time. I want to thank my good friend Claudia Wyatt again for showing people 
that you can find your inner compass and you can have and you can live the life that you love. Now, you can see this show on my podcast, which is called Life Altering Events. It will be on Parade Deck on my YouTube channel, and I will send links to Claudia, and she will post it to the thousands of places where she puts up all of her information. If you use the YouTube channel, please subscribe. And let me leave you with this, as I do every week. None of us are in this alone. And the secret to walking on water is to know where the rocks are. And today, Claudia showed us where many, many of those rocks are. Join us again next week. We look at another life-altering event. Claudia, again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Frank. Thank you, everyone, for listening.